Welcome back to another video. Last time I was here, I talked about why pickleball sucks. This time I'm gonna talk about why my favorite sport, tennis, sucks. Currently, the average age of a, of a viewer from a tennis match is 61 years old, which is a huge problem because that age is not gonna get any, any younger. That means we are having a problem getting new people interested in the sport. And if we want longevity for this sport, then we're gonna have to change something so that new people are gonna be able to watch. So there are a couple reasons why I think that this is happening and why tennis sucks in general. For one, it's just boring. For most people, tennis matches are extremely boring to watch. They take a long time. There's a lot of dead time between points. It's not very exciting, including for myself. I, I like to watch tennis because I get a little bit more deep into it. I'm trying to understand and analyze these players, but for most people, they're not doing that. The average player or the average person watching it is not doing that. They want some entertainment. It's just a little bit too slow pace in their eyes for it to be considered entertainment. Part of the issue is that the courts have just been getting slower and slower. If you know anything about hard courts in tennis, they've decided to really slow them down by adding a lot more sand or any sort of sediment into the paint. It makes it gritty of a surface and it makes the ball slow down tremendously. If you couple that with the season being very clay court heavy, you involve a bunch of very slow type tennis players, people that like to grind, people that like to rally. Not only that, but the grass court season is so short that it doesn't really even make sense to be a grass court dominant type player because you're only going to get a very short window of success. The clay court players have a long season that where they can accrue a lot more money because they're just playing a lot more tournaments. And it actually works even with the slow hard courts because their game style translates pretty easily. Now this this doesn't have to be this way. In the past, it wasn't either. A bunch of the indoor courts were very fast, and we actually had a surface called Carpet, which is a very cheap, regularly available surface that was super fast, very, very fast, low bouncing type of surface. However, the ATP has banned the surface for a multitude of different reasons, so we don't really have that as an option. What you could also do is extend the grass court season, which is tough to do because grass is such a volatile surface, but really, I think the best way to really change things up is just to have the hard courts be sped up. There's no reason to have the clay courts and the hard courts both be slow. Have a clay court be nice and slow, have a hard court be the middle ground between a clay and grass, and have your grass courts be the fastest they can be. And if we really want to mix things up, I would say we need to introduce carpet courts again. Make, give us a fourth surface that's also really fast if you want to keep the hard courts maybe a little bit slower. And like I mentioned, the play styles are becoming very similar because people want to be successful and make as much money as possible. With the tournaments being all on slow surface, is you're seeing these players look exactly the same as each other playing the same way and it gets a little bit stale. Another reason why tennis sucks is because it's so expensive. Racket prices are set for this upcoming year to be well over $300 from the big brands. Decent shoes that are in the mid to high range price are around $120 a pair and that's on the low end for maybe like some Nike Vapors but then they continue to go up from there with Lacoste having a shoe that costs $175 and these shoes no longer have the six month warranty like they used to in the past with the barricades and, and other various shoes. These companies have gotten rid of that six month warranty and the shoes just don't last that long, especially if you're playing on a gritty hard court, which we're playing with more, more now because the tournaments are putting these courts to be much slower. Not only that, but strings and stringing services are very expensive. I would say the average player needs to play with a multi-filament, which ends up being a little bit more expensive than polyester. Granted, they can keep it in the racket a little bit longer, and if they're not hitting very hard, they don't need to replace it as often. But once you start getting better, you start playing with these poly strings or, or hybrid setups, and you start snapping strings left and right, you're going to have to get your strings redone quite often. Me personally, when I'm playing, I string my rackets every two, three days. One, either because it breaks, or two, if it doesn't break within those three days of hard practice, the racket's a completely different racket with poly strings. It's lost all those tension, and I can start feeling in my arm. It starts to hurt. The balls don't last a long time. You gotta kind of replace them pretty often, which is also extremely wasteful. Court time is expensive, unless you have a nice public facility. Some places are very cheap with that, but even so, it's tough to even find a good, decent setup that has a free public court facility. And if you're really trying to learn and improve, the best way to do that is through private lessons and group clinics, both which are entirely expensive, especially if you're doing them multiple times a week. Now just like in pickleball and in my last video, if you didn't watch that, go ahead and uh, watch that video too on why pickleball sucks. In tennis, the scoring also is terrible. It's a little bit better, I would say, than pickleball just because you have rally scoring, although that is changing in pickleball. They are starting to do uh, rally scoring in some leagues. However, just the way everything is, is set up is very dated. It has not changed in a very long time. We're stuck with this 15, 30, 40, which on the surface looks super complicated to people who don't know tennis. Now to us who have played tennis for a long time, we know it's actually really not that bad. But for most people, it looks terrible, it looks complicated. Why does it go from 15 to 30 and then doesn't go to 45? Or why does the game take so long? Why is it, what's the difference between a point, game, set, match? It's a lot of complicated stuff that I think the average viewer just would not understand. 
Also, the matches take really long, and I know especially in the Grand Slams of the five set matches, they can take a long time, which is, you know, maybe it's fine for Grand Slam to have some tradition and do those five set matches, but for the normal tournaments, we need to stay with two set matches, and I'm even all for just doing no ad scoring. It's just so much simpler when we have a deciding point that no matter what happens, winner takes all and wins that game. Yes, there's a little bit of luck involved, but you know what? I play with it in the college tour, and a bunch of other of my buddies play with it in the college tour, and you get used to it so quickly, and it's really not that big of a deal. Plus, some statistics even show that no ad scoring and ad scoring usually end up with the exact same result. So if you're worried about maybe some luck influencing the games, it really is not that big of a deal. Also, if we can reduce the amount of time that lets occur, that's even better. So let's say we just get rid of the let altogether on the serve. It really does not make sense why we don't replay points throughout the rest of the point other than the serve. Yes, I understand maybe it's gimmicky you win off of a drop shot serve, but again, I come from college tennis where that rule was in effect and we never really had that many drop shot aces. Okay, it would happen every once in a while, but it was not usually a make or break moment. And it's it was just so rare that it didn't really change the outcome of the match. There's also far too much emphasis in tennis on singles, especially on TV. Singles dominates all the airwaves when majority of the players that actually play the game play doubles. So the recreational player can't really relate to what's happening on TV. Yes, they think it's amazing and it's a spectacle to watch, but why not show something that is more relatable to the average viewer? Not only that, women's tennis needs to be shown much more than what it is currently. Currently, uh, women's tennis has been really put on the back burner for quite some time, and it's a shame. Stuff like mixed doubles should absolutely be shown, because most of the stuff that I see, at least in my local club, is men's doubles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. I hardly ever see anybody coming out here and playing singles. Now, this might come as a surprise to some of you, but prize money is also a giant issue within tennis. Now, I know we're used to seeing Rogers and Rafas and Novaks of the world making millions and millions of dollars playing tennis and becoming extremely wealthy doing so, but that's really only it's reserved for the very elite of the sport. A majority of tennis players that are professional actually lose money playing tennis. If you're playing on the ITF level like I am, you're going to have to have a second job or take out a loan to be able to afford playing at these tournaments because the travel is expensive, coaches are expensive, accommodation is expensive. It's, it's really kind of a nightmare. And these tournaments really don't pay out all that much. So even if you go deep into a tournament, you're still paying multiple nights for food, hotel, and all that sort of stuff. So the prize money that you earn really doesn't even out. Around the 200 ATP ranking is when people start to break even, and then with in the 150 to 100 ranges when people start to make money. So if you think we have people that are ranked within you know, the top 2,000 and a lot of those people are not getting paid really what they should be, it's kind of sad. It just makes tennis look like a joke. Now part of the issue with that is that most tournaments are a 90-10 split, which means that 90% of the money goes to the executives of the tournaments, 10% actually goes to the players, which is crazy. When almost any other major sport in the world goes about 50-50. US basketball, US hockey, football especially, they all go about 50-50 split. Soccer teams almost assuredly always go 50-50 split. Now I will put a little caveat here. I did not know this, but when I was researching this video, apparently in 2023 there's going to be a redistribution where there's going to be a 50-50 split and that the finances are going to be much more transparent than they have been in the years past. So hopefully things will start to change and we'll see more players being able to make more money. Because to be honest, it does not make sense that you are one of the best players in the world ranked as an ATP player and you are not able to live off of it. That's a great achievement and I think you should be able to profit and be able to live life. Plus, if this is truly your job, you should make it your job. You shouldn't have to be working as a coach or working at whatever other job that you're doing to be able to support yourself. If you're a professional tennis player, you should be supporting yourself as a professional playing the game that you like, practicing, working on your craft. Allowing players to actually practice just breeds more competition. The players will get better, the matches will get much more interesting, and that's better for everybody. And when I complained about pickleball players having some elitism and snobbery. Well, that is very little compared to tennis players. The amount of elitism in tennis is absurd. The game is rooted in so much tradition that people just cannot see past it. It's it's really crazy. Not allowing players to show emotion on the court, finding them for breaking rackets, not really enjoying the spectacle of the match and having the crowd have to be unbelievably quiet just to keep things rolling is ridiculous. If we want younger people to actually watch tennis, we need to make it fun. We need to make it exciting. We need to make it loud. Doing the things that we're doing right now is the exact opposite of that. For example, the Tennis Spin channel recently just posted a video about tennis etiquette uh, where it was supposed to be teaching spectators how to behave at a tennis match. Now listen, the average person does not want to be told how to behave during a sporting event. People go to sporting events to let loose, have fun, drink a few beers, and watch something really spectacular unfold before them. But if you're getting 
you know, have to have a, a school lesson for how to behave at a, at a sports event? Come on, who wants to do that? Really only the people that are steeped in tennis want to actually go through all of that, not the average person. So as much as I really enjoy watching Tennis Spin's videos, I have to extremely, extremely disagree with Harry on this one. It is horrible. You have to allow people to express themselves and you have to allow them to let loose at this. There's only a handful of sports that require complete silence when they play. And I'm sorry, I don't think tennis is one of those. I grew up playing on a tennis court that was right next to a busy road where people were shouting at us, uh, some horrible stuff, honking, trying to throw us off. And we got used to it. To me, if you're a professional tennis player, you should be able to handle that sort of stuff. It's crazy to me that, you know, a tennis player can get so upset that somebody in the crowd is talking or, or making a noise when they're seeing something so amazing happening right in front of them. Tennis is a great sport. Let people in the crowd express that. And one of the things that I think really is unfortunate is that it's a solo sport. Tennis sucks because typically you're not playing doubles, you're playing a lot of singles, and as a kid you're playing really a ton of singles. It's so isolated. Kids want to play with other kids. They want to have friends around with them. So when they go and they play soccer, they play basketball, they play football, baseball even, they're surrounded by a team and it's fun. It's like a separate family for them. It's really interesting. Their friends are always there. Everybody wants to improve together and it looks like a great time. Tennis, you're spending hours taking private lessons. Group clinics are few and far between, at least in this area. You know, we still have some kids clinics here, but you know, you really have to take a lot of private lessons to start really honing in your skills. And it really takes a special type of kid to do that. So we're weeding out a lot of kids at an early age just because of the nature of the game where we don't have that team atmosphere. Now, tennis does not have to suck. I think there's a really good solution to all of this, or at least a majority of the problems that I've listed today that could really revolutionize tennis. And that's putting an emphasis on team tennis. My whole life growing up, I've played team tennis from a young age. I was playing junior tennis league, I played middle school and high school tennis, and then college tennis as well. My favorite memories from playing tennis are playing on a team. Always either playing doubles or at least playing some format of team tennis. One, it's easier for the casual viewer to get behind what's going on when they're behind a team rather than an individual. A team stays pretty much forever, right? Whether they do poorly or they start doing really well, the team itself will stay. The players may change, but at least it has its core identity, and that's really important to spectators. Imagine having a football team that's your favorite and you watch them for a couple years and then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. Well, what do you do? You have to get, you, to, you know, you become a fan of another football team. It's really kind of a bizarre dynamic with tennis because your favorite player will not be around forever. And that's the truth of it. Team tennis also has such a lively atmosphere. Uh, if you look at stuff like the Labor Cup and the ATP Cup, the teammates were getting into it and it really got the crowd engaged too. People were loving it. It was a different type of atmosphere. It's so electric compared to just solo tennis. It would really help with expenses too because in other sports, typically the team will help pay for the equipment that you need to survive. In tennis, you don't have that right now. You're pretty much paying for yourself unless you bag a sponsor. So having a team there to be able to deal with your physio, uh, coaches, training, rackets, apparel, anything, if that's handled by the team, that takes a huge load off the player, which allows them more time to practice rather than to have a real job. And because team tennis really isn't as traditional as just solo tennis, you can kind of modify the scoring a little bit and the traditionalists of tennis won't be as upset. You're always gonna piss them off and that's just part of it. But you know what? We're gonna have to piss off the traditionalists because the sport is dying. We need to be proactive in changing things. With team events, it when everything counts the same, if you have an equal amount of singles matches and doubles matches, there's a huge emphasis on doubles now, which makes it a much more entertaining sport to watch. And then let's talk about the prize money issues. With a lot of team sports, if you make it to a championship, yes, you earn a little bit more money, but otherwise you're salaried. You do not have to worry about having another job. You don't have to be worried about anything like this. The team takes care of you. You have that money, you are safe, and when you don't have that pressure of money and having to be successful 100% of the time to survive, you can flourish and become a better athlete. And that goes across all sports. And of course, it solves a solo sport issue. You have a team backing you now. You're not just out there on your own. Now, if you're a kid though, it still kind of might not solve the issue. But here's what I say. I say we treat tennis more like club soccer, where there are a bunch of different clubs that are coming from different cities, regions, you know, countries, and it starts all the way from the junior level where you have junior development programs. Now, if you're a junior being developed through a, a system that rises up through the ranks of their city club, and then they get promoted to their state club, you know, that's something different. They're always around a different team. Currently, you're just driving around from tournament to tournament with your parents or whoever, or your coach, and you're only seeing your friends 
part of the year. It gets very lonely on the road as a junior. It's just sad for them. Instead, if you're there with your city team, you're always around each other, you're traveling together, you always got your group of friends with you, and then you move up to a different club. Let's say you play good enough. You don't have to be worried about, am I gonna be able to meet anybody new? You got them right there. They're your teammates. They're gonna be your friends, especially if you're a decent person. But anyway, these are just some of my gripes I have with tennis. Of course, I still love it. I will always continue playing tennis until my body no longer allows me to. And then I'll still try to do stuff with tennis if that means coaching from the sidelines, I'll gladly do it. I love it so much that I'm willing to see it change to have it survive. And I think other tennis players should feel the same way. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And again, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference for my channel. We've been having unbelievable growth recently. And I want to hear your perspective down in the comments. Did I miss anything? Did I leave anything out? But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.